Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at chapter 10, communication. And now in this chapter, we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to be considering rules and regulations when sending emails. And we're going to look at several features of the internet. In particular, we're going to define and explain many of the internet terms used and how to search for information on the internet. And also part of this chapter, we're also going to consider the difference between the internet, which is the World Wide Web, and the intranet. Okay, so stay with me on this. Now we're starting off with communication with other ICT users using email. Okay, so we want to communicate with people using email. So we're, we're going to look at the characteristics, the uses, and the constraints. Okay, it is. Um, well established that email is one of the most common way of people communicating between themselves, okay? However, there are certain rules that need to be followed to ensure, you know, the security of the messages um, sent um, and also received to prevent people writing anything which is regarded as unacceptable, okay? And this first part, we're looking at the constraints, okay? Now, in this country, we're looking at legislation, okay? Many countries have laws that protect people against the misuse of emails. That is sending and receiving messages on the internet, right? And there is a guideline on what this law often requires companies or individuals to do when sending out emails. The law covers the use of emails and highlights the numbers of constraints that will be covered in this part of this chapter, okay? Um... So what are those emails law? The first one that it is important that emails are not sent out with false or misleading subject lines. Don't send out false or misleading subject lines, right? Subject that talks about the title of the mail that you're sending out. Like it should not be misleading, it should not be false. Falsified. The next one is a valid poster address must accompany emails from companies or organizations. So it has to have a poster address. Logo if possible. Right to show that this is the company that is emailing or, or making addresses um, to this particular user or, or group of users. Many countries don't allow companies or organizations to harvest email address. Okay, that is capturing a list of email address. They don't allow it because most of the time they can sell it out to third parties. Okay, and companies and organizations must make their privacy policy very clear to subscribers. Who must be made aware of such policy? You don't just you don't just um, tell people to subscribe um, um, without any genuine reason why they need to subscribe to the mail, and it has to be clear. It has to be stated. This is the reason why you're subscribing, and this is the information that you're going to get. They shouldn't just subscribe, and what they are getting is something else. No, that will not be good, right? So um, that is why there's an email law. Companies must provide subscribers with a very clear way, okay, to unsubscribe from their lesson. So, it should not be that when they want to unsubscribe, they have to put in personal details. Obviously, that becomes a, a, a form of phishing, right? So, the, the, these laws are there to ensure that subscribers who, you know, have been subscribing and I don't want any more, and, you know, I, I'm just going to back out, should have a free way to just unsubscribe and the process should be extremely very, very easy. Okay? And of course, a company or individual will have a clear way of recipients to opt out, right? If you want to opt out from receiving emails, it should be very clear, it should not be bogus, it should not be too many processes, right? Many com uh, countries require senders of email to obtain what we call an opt-in permission before emails are sent out. Okay, you have to opt-in before these uh, permissions are sent out. The next constraint is acceptable language. The language used by people when writing emails should follow an acceptable code of practice. Okay? This following is a list of acceptable content to be used in email, either in text message or on online forums. We have obscene image. Okay? Unacceptable. The image should not be obscene. It's unacceptable. Language that is regarded as abusive, profane, inflammatory, um, coercive, um, defamatory, or blasphemous should not be accepted. It's unacceptable. Okay, should not be part of your accepted, um, should not be part of your language speech or part of your typing process, right? Any form of racist, exploitative, or violent messages 
is unacceptable, right? The use of illegal materials or messages is unacceptable, okay? It's unacceptable. The lead does not cover everything, but it gives, you know, an idea of what is not acceptable when sending emails, okay? It is not regarded as adequate uh, that recipients can simply delete messages uh, or images, right? It's essential that everyone, every anyone writing email or posting in, uh, messages on bulletin board is aware of these constraints, okay? For employers, what are the guidelines that you need to set, right? It is imperative that companies, no matter how small, no matter how large they can be, employ people, uh, employ that people publish guidelines regarding the use of videos and other electronic communications, okay? And this guideline must follow that law in their particular country in which that particular country uh, company operates. Company must also indicate how they will ensure that all their staff are following the rules. We have an example here to show us a list of the company email policy and we can just um, just go to them as much as possible. One of them is that it must be clear when email content is not permitted. Um, employees should be told to only use their own account when sending emails, and this account should be password protected. Staff need to be aware of the methods and duration of storing emails. Um, incoming, incoming emails should only be read by the participants that can only be read by another member of staff, if so, nominated. Okay? Monitor of your email should be carried out and staff will be aware that the company has the right to read all emails. Okay? And suitable outgoing trainings will take place to ensure staff follow company policy at all times. And that company policy on emails will be enforced at all times. Okay? So, um, uh, guidelines by employers is also very, very important. Okay? The next one is copyright and security of email. Please, it is important, right, to realize that emails are subject to copyright just because it is relatively easy to use or to forward an email does not mean it is always legal to do so. Yes, that is also true of any attachment sent by an email, okay? At the web pages, the copyright in an email is determined by its word content, okay? And we have... Um, Printing, copying of all the email is generally not considered a breach of copyright unless the sender has indicated clearly that this message is confidential or the subject of copyright or is subject of copyright law. It's important that the recipient checks this out before forwarding it to somebody else. Most common organizations will clearly set out the policy on sending emails and material that they contain. Right? Now, this will be particularly true if the sender email address is part of the company email. For example, we have this, and the email attachment from the company organization will usually contain some copyright statement, such as this, right? Any definition of copyright is strictly prohibited unless you are, or you are the intended recipient or response for delivering message to you. you know, just a frame of this, okay? Now, it is common for messages um, to, uh, to then make some statement that the views and opinions in the, an email may not represent those of the company. And the content may be subject to disclosure under the Freedom of Information legislation. Okay? Companies are clearly uh, very concerned about any potential risk of copyright infringement. Let's look at the security and the password protection. It is important to consider the security of emails. Very important. Many security aspects have been covered somewhere in, in, in this book. Um, I think I have a video on security measures as well, so you probably can check the channel to see that. So methods of increasing the security of this email include yeah, use a strong passwords when logging to your email account. Um, of course, it has to be a strong password combination of um, letters, numbers, and other symbols. It's regarded as a strong password. Change the password on a regular basis. Use the spam filters to remove certain suspicion emails or a junk or folder. Or even block the email entirely. Okay? Removing antivirus and anti spam software at all times on your computer to protect against email from unknown or malicious sources. Emails are said to be vulnerable. 
to both passive and active attacks. Passive attacks include the release of email materials to other users without your consent. That's passive. Active attacks involve modification of your messages or even denial of service. That is overloading your service by sending out emails uh, basically to clock up your computer and make internet access almost impossible. Active attack can also involve browsers or phishing attack and we've talked about it in this um, in one of my videos so check it out on my channel. Okay, Netiquette is shortened for the phrase internet ticket, right? Which refers to the need to respect other users view and display common courtesy, right? When very important um, when posting views in online discussion groups or sending out emails, right? It is very important to consider that you write always because the writer cannot see your facial expression or body language. What may have been intended to be humorous or offend somebody if they, mis if they misunderstood your message, uh, they could draw the wrong conclusion. And that is the whole essence of what we are doing this video okay you should always be aware of this when posting messages or sending emails there are numbers of rules governing this etiquette um, one of them is the one that was published in 1994 in Virginia um, so we'll look at it do not be abusive do not threaten people use personal violence do not send spam that is do not really send somebody the same information over and over again uh, be clear about, be clear and succinct, succinct with your message. Do not waffle, right? So your message has to be very clear. Shouldn't be bogus. Shouldn't be something that is misleading or confusing. Remember that posts are public in most cases and can be read by anyone. Always check your spellings and grammar to give a good impression. We respect people's privacy and do not discuss or publish information that might embarrass um, somebody, right? Forgive people's mistake. Do not be compelled to respond to an error. And do not use um, capital letters to highlight comments. This is seen as shouting in email, um, text messages, and online phones. So don't use capital letters to highlight comments. You know, what do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's, it's, it's seen as shouting. Right? Do not plagiarize. Always acknowledge quotes used in any missing. Right? Do not use too many um, emoticons. Right? As they might annoy your readers. Don't use so many emoticons, like your emojis. Don't use too many of them. Okay? And we're going to talk about email groups. We're going to talk about email groups in our next video okay um so please it's important to go over this and over and over as much as possible so that you can have an understanding bye and i'm going to see you in my next video